American accent sounds so out of place here. Um, I um, am going to set my own timepiece because I can't see the timepiece they have up here. So I have a Braille PDA here that I'm just going to set. And there we are. And I'll even look at it from time to time. Um, <clears throat> when they first invited me here, they asked if I would need help up the stage, up the stairs to the stage. And um, after what you've just seen, I think that would have been quite unfitting. Um, and this timepiece, they also asked uh, how I would be able to keep track of time. And that was a good question. Um, uh, and this is how I do it. It's a Braille timepiece, and it basically just kind of counts off the seconds as we go. Um, you call it a timer here. In the States, we call it a confidence monitor. <laughs> now, what could inspire less confidence than watching your time tick away second by second? <laughs> Especially when they only give you 12 minutes to tell your life story. <clears throat> so how do I find my way? Well, that's easy. That's very easy. Uh, you heard me clicking. They explained that it was a sonar. The sonar is very much a concept that we're all familiar with. Bats use it. Dolphins use it. Um, and uh, submarine technicians use it. So that part's easy. I click. That essentially asks two questions of the environment. It's a sonar call. Scientists call it a call. Or they'll say that I'm interrogating the environment. The two questions are, where are you? And what are you? So those are the two key questions embedded in every click. The more clearly we can ask those questions, the more clearly will the environment respond. Now, that pretty much answers the question, how do I know where I'm going? If that was all to the story, I could step off stage right now and be done with plenty of time to spare. But would you feel satisfied? Would you feel edified if I did that? Not so much. So the real question is, what is the point? What is the purpose of all of this? If I were the only person who could flap my arms and fly to the moon, would it matter? Really, um, I've been all over the world. Um, I, they flew me out from Los Angeles yesterday. I arrived yesterday. They, uh, I was in the States for three days, uh, back from a seven-week tour of Queensland and New South Wales, Australia. Prior to that, I was in Austria, Germany, Romania, and Holland. I've been to over, well, nearly 25 different countries, um, half a dozen of them in the last few months. Why? What would my claim to fame really be? So why don't we go ahead and show the first clip. Um, I have a clicker just in case no one's paying attention back there. Okay. That's not really my claim to fame. Um, <laughs> I did not teach this young boy how to play basketball. I can't play basketball myself worth rubbish. But I taught him how to find the basket. I taught him how to find his way around. You heard him clicking. Um, I have developed means of teaching people how to find freedom in their lives. The focus is on blind individuals, but we're all blind in one way or another. 
we could all use a bit of direction, myself included, in how to find more freedom in our lives. Now, this young boy's name is Lucas. Um, Lucas was perhaps seven, seven or eight at the most when this uh, film was taken. His parents contacted me from uh, when he was four years old. Uh, they wanted their son, who was blind, born blind, to have more freedom in his life. He would not let go of someone's hand. Okay, um, He would trail walls, he would kind of feel his way through his environment, but that was about the extent of his freedom at that time. His parents wanted something simple at first. They wanted him to have a cane. Okay, I've got a cane. You saw me come up the stairs with it. You saw me using it coming onto the stage. Cane's great stuff. It will help find things, okay, that uh, would not be possible or certainly wouldn't be comfortable without one. Okay, so uh, they could not get the local authorities to teach him how to use a cane. They could not even get the local authorities to provide him with a cane. Well, eventually they did, but not to teach him. I'll use the UK as an example, but this is happening all over the world. In most parts of the world, blind children aren't even provided with a cane until they're, say, eight years old. What is provided in some cases prior to the age of eight is what I call dependency conditioning. Systematically training our blind individuals how to be dependent on others, either to guide them or to modify the environment to be, quote, blind friendly, unquote. That is not the kind of world that we live in, okay? So the first thing I did was I taught Lucas some very simple, very straightforward techniques of how to use a cane. <clears throat> Everyone humor me for a moment. Close your eyes, please. Close your eyes for just a moment, everyone. Now, assuming that you tried to open your eyes and couldn't, don't open your eyes. Assuming that you tried to open your eyes and couldn't, okay, the lights are out, eyes won't open. Um, but eventually you need to find your way out of here, okay? Something's got to happen for you to move. Something's got to happen for you to, to start to, put, to, to lead your life. So uh, on a scale of, say, zero to 10, zero being not at all, just think about this. How confident would you feel to move around your environment? How confident would you feel to be able to get up out of your seat and start finding your way toward the door, okay? Probably most of you fall somewhere between zero and three. A very few of you would probably be thinking three, okay? Some of you might know the place better than others. But imagine now, keeping your eyes closed, imagine now you suddenly had a stick, something no more complicated than a stick. Okay. Would you feel more confident? Would you feel more comfortable being able to get up and safely find your way toward the door? Raise your hand if you would, if you feel like you would feel more comfortable. Okay, let's see. I heard a bunch of hands go up, okay? <laughs> All right. It's that simple. The use of, a, of, a, of something as simple as a stick, which actually does have some technique to it. It does have some training behind it, but it's very simple. And yet that simple sense of safety, that simple sense of taking ownership of our environment is not being provided to our young blind children. Okay, now let me give you just a quick example of a more sophisticated system that works in addition to the very simple system of the long cane. I will <clears throat> use a flat panel that I just happen to have in my backpack. Okay, this isn't an advert for Apple. It just happens to be what I have available. 
going to turn my back on the audience. I know that's a no-no, but it's got to happen. And if we all close our eyes again, please. I'm going to give a couple of very simple demonstrations, very simple demonstrations of a system that allows for the kinds of freedom that we are able to make available for students. So I'm going to make a shh sound. It's going to be regular and consistent. And I'm going to pass this uh, panel, I'll call it, in front of my face, and you'll hear it going by. Listen. Okay, now if you'll open your eyes for just a moment, this is all I was doing. So Lucas can learn very simply to use the click of his tongue. He's asking the backboard of the basket, where are you? He can detect its edges and its surface, and that's what he's learned to aim for. It's that simple. Now how does he know how far he is away? So close your eyes again, please. <clears throat> and. I'll do the same uh, shh sound, shh, but I'm going to move this uh, panel toward me and away from me, and you'll hear the change of the sound as I do so. Okay. So you can open your eyes. Same deal. Lucas can hear where the basket uh, backboard is relative to his position, both by listening for the position, uh, left, right wise, and also by listening to its distance. If I'm riding a bicycle and I'm coming up to, say, a large solid object, or maybe even not so large of a solid object, I hear that coming, OK? The only difference is that I'm clicking instead of shishing, but the, the effect is essentially the same. Okay. Our interest is in making this available for blind people everywhere and also making the point that if blind people can find their way through life by using a method such as this, then any of us can look at our own lives, look at the darkness that occurs in all of our lives, and ask ourselves, what can we do to find our way through that darkness? Because there's always a way. And that, for me, is really the most important lesson of why it is that I'm up here. And John, if you're moseying up here on stage, no cue subtle enough will let me know that you're there. So <laughs> don't even bother.